Well, Sofia Namura, but once Manchester United and obviously United are also not ready to disappoint him. They are 100% determined to see to that they resolve the situation of him very, very soon. Welcome to United Matters channel. Good evening, guys. And where you're watching us from, second video of the day. Hope you guys are really having a fantabulous evening. And we hope that the weekend is really treating you well. Not so. So smash the like button close to 300 times. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Go ahead into the lower right bottom corner smash the black button that has the word subscribe after smashing it hit the notification bell that will enable you get notified every time you upload a video onto this channel and we want to hit 15,000 subscribers before the end of this month and guys let's continue subscribing and let's put up the work let's put in the shift that is going to let us to that milestone now after sofian amrabat you're going to talk about another midfielder that united are really looking at if at all the deal of sofian amrabat does not come to materialization united are going to ban munich to get one midfielder in there for you and that is leon gretzka we are so much linked to that player that eric ten Hag and united have gone hate to admire for a very long time and lastly Ten Hag is going to have to explain to us as to why he's trying to bring on players with what we call a winning mentality and the shield is going to hate to give United to do what we call promotional campaigns for the kids that is going to hate to shock everyone because he wants those players dedicated to footballing matters only. So let's start it off from where it is supposed to be commenced off now. This is Gazeta del Esporto, very concrete when it, came, when it came to the story of Andrew Onana. The other ones that really broke the stories, first bid in, the people are saying, no bid is in, but the fact is United was really working on this deal. The meetings that took place in Ibiza between the Inter CEO and uh, the Director of Operations, David Horison of Man United, all reported and first broken by Gazeta del Esporto and Alfredo Pedula. And then and then Dimazio, then Fabrizio Romano came in fourth. Now, they've told us that Manchester United are the most determined team for Sofian Amrabat and parties want to resolve this situation, want to resolve his situation by Monday. He would be interested in joining <coughs> Manchester United. And obviously, United want this deal resolved very, very soon. And uh, you'll understand why, because they've gotten in money they've gotten in money close to 22 million pounds and the deal of sofian amra but is worth 25 million pounds why sofian amra but is left with only on his contract at fiorentina and if at all they don't sell him now they are going to find themselves in a situation of losing him on a free in the summer or selling him on a cheaper in the January transfer win and i think this is the point where unit is going to lean on and obviously counter press um Fiorentina to accept the amount of money that they are being offered and um, 25 million pounds I think it would be like 20 million pounds upfront fee and 5 million pounds of add-ons that is it mounting to 30 million euros because 30 million euros is almost 25 million pounds I think when they sold Anthony Elanga uh, Teles um, this guy Ethan Layard um, and this Zdan Igbo guy, <coughs> they've gotten in 22 million pounds, meaning that the 20 to be paid in is a variable and they have to speculate this deal in like two or three years. So that shows you that United are really having an edge onto this deal. And I think on Monday, we might see something very important that's going to happen as the determination is really high, the appetite for United is high. The appetite of Sofian Amrabat is high because he wants to rejoin Eric Ten Hag and obviously see him do the magic. Now, what shows that the appetite of Sofian Amrabat is high? Santi J, known as Santi Aunoma, has put out this story about Sofian Amrabat that has gone ahead to obviously confirm to me that this deal is also one of those that is 80%, 90% ready to be completed. Now, he has said Man United have made an initial verbal offer to Sofian Amrabati's agent. Al Hilal have also made an offer worth 15 million euros, but for now he's not interested. So, United are in talks with the agent of Sofian Amrabat. So it is that these personal terms are really gotten over the line. Remember, if they reach an extent when they've gone ahead to agree that they 
personal terms aren't going to be a problem then united will go ahead and obviously make the bid meaning that via the weekend the team of united is really busy with sofia and amra but to it that they gate these personal term issues over the line and i would love to see it really get done and dusted because <clears throat> We are having limited time. We are having limited time. If it can happen to really get in these two players, you know, in a space of like two weeks, then that will be good. We get the deal of Sofian Amrabat done in seven days. Even the deal of Rasmus Hoyland done in seven days. That will be exquisite by the board of Manchester United because it has not been an easy summer because it was obviously <clears throat> forewarned to us by the CEO of Man United, that is Richard Arnold, when he made the fans of, when he met the fans of United who used to demonstrate at a pub, and he warned us that there's not going to be a lot of money to spend in the summer. That is, it was foreseen because of the financial fair play, and obviously we've seen people obviously the needful, and everyone who doesn't really believe that financial fair play really works. He's just trying to sell his own agenda. Why? Look at Juventus. Juventus is struggling. You know, they've even gone ahead to obviously <clears throat> tell one of the former players of Man United, Paul Ebide Pogba, that he should take a pay cut of his salary. And they are willing to sell the likes of Dusan Vlahovic to get in money to run the club because they're not in the Champions League. Even the UEFA Conference League they're supposed to play looks like it's hard for them to play there. So we have to be so much, <clears throat> so much consistent and so much um, and so much i i watching to see it that we don't make a mistake that will lead to us being fined again because this summer we got fined by 300 300 000 euros that is it so we wait and see how that's going to pan out but sofian amrabat once man united and united are determined to see to it that they get the deal over the line and the coming in of al hilal is one of those things that you would obviously love as a player, as a fan of Man United, because this is going to help us. Al Ahili, it's Al Ahili, is really going to help us speed up. Like I've told you, the deal of Rasmus Hoyland, that that is acting as a catalyst for this deal to be gotten over the line. Because if you don't get such such interruptions, trust me, you won't see United acting fast. That is, trust me. If we were in a battle for Andrew Onana with another team, in a week this deal would have gone ahead to get done. So I believe the coming in of Al Ahli for Sofian Amrabat deal and PSG for the deal of Rasmus Hoyland is going to act as a catalyst to see these deals gotten over the line as up. That is it because if we don't, there are other teams that are willing to take these players and these teams are really willing to cash in. So, we wait and see how that pans out, but it's obviously going to be a very, 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 very huge double signing from Italy. Meaning that this season, it's going to be on record that United is going to have to sign three players from Italy. I think the season that saw us sign very many players from Italy was when? Have you ever signed more than two? Because for Paul Pogba, how many players have we signed from Italy? <coughs> mm. Salex Ferguson signed Veron from Italy. Who else did he sign from Italy? So we're not going to have to sign very many players from Italy. Um, this right back mm, that played in the final, Damian, was from Italy. Mm, who else came in from Italy? Paul Ebile Pogba came in from Italy. Who else? Mm. I don't remember many coming in from Italy, but uh, this time round we are getting three players from Italy: Andrea Nana, Sofian Amrabat, and guess who else? Rasmus Hoyland coming in from Atalanta. Looking like we would have gone ahead to get the fifth one if at all we really acted fast. That is Kim Min Jae. So looks like. There is some good talent in Italy, that is it. So, that's what we heard about Sofian Amrabat, and we're going to keep you updated about how these deals are really going to go on and really get on. Now, United look like they're having a long list of midfielders to bring in through, even if the deal of Sofian Amrabat fall, doesn't fall through into their favor. They've gone ahead and line up another midfielder that we talked about, that we talked about in the previous 
two summers and that is Leon Gritska. Now, Kerry Howe, reporter of Sky Sports 1 News, reporting for Bayern Munich, has gone ahead and confirmed us that Man United are interested in Leon Gretzka. Eric Ten Hag believes he's a very interesting player. Something could be could be ongoing in the background. Gretzka wants to stay but could rethink if he's to lose his regular spot ahead of the Euros. Tuko is not a big fan. So, Gretzka is that player that's been really hunted by United, sorry, followed up by United for a very, very long time. And as it stands, it's it's he's one of those <laughs> that I've gone ahead to bless the transfer list of Man United with 28 years of age. I really like him as he plays well into what we call the central defense midfield. He can also play in the double pivot with Casemiro, as he has always been playing with Joshua Kimmich in the double pivot of Bayern Munich. He's a press resistant player has some goals on him, assists, and is a towering of a lad. So, to me, he's a player that even if we've gotten him in, will be really great. But the reason, why, the reason that's why I like Sofian Amra, but ahead of him is, Sofian Amra, but is two years younger than the player. And the recent summer, we brought in some grown-up players, Casemiro 30, Ericsson 30. So, one of those things I've gone ahead to notice in this transfer window is that Ten Hag is going in for youthful players who are in their early or mid-twenties. Um, Mason Mount, 24 years of age. Um, which other player? Andrew Yonana, 27 years of age, in his mid-twenties. Then, and for goalkeeper, that is like being 20 years of age because he can be in goal for the next 10 years. That is it, because we saw Edwin van der Sar stretch up to 38 years of age in between the stitches of Manchester United. Now, if we get in Sofian Amra, about 26 years of age, and Rasmus Hoyland, who is 20 years of age, if we manage to also learn that De Sassi deal, De Sassi is 20... De Sassi is 26 years of age, meaning that would have gone ahead to secure their future for the next 4-5 years, and they'll be at the club of Manchester United, youthful in nature, and when Casemiro really gets old, you just get to know that Sofian Amrabat will be like 28 or 29 years of age and Kobe Menu will come in through later to get the job done and dusted. So that's it coming in from the club of Manchester United and the interest in Gretzka, though the priority remains though the priority remains uh, the priority remains uh, Sofian Amrabat. Now, let's talk about Eric Ten Hag on why I was going to hate to sign these players that you are seeing right now at the club of Manchester United. Now, everyone is asking himself, why is it that Eric Ten Hag is bringing in players who have, an, who have a history of obviously winning trophies? Ten Hag said as to why he's bringing in players with winning mentalities. That's what we are looking for. Characters, it's not only the player you bring in, but also a person. We demand high standards in very, in every occasion, and you have to deliver. Otherwise, you are not in the right place. So, Ten Hag first talks to these players and tells them what his demands are. That's why he sort of it that when he was signing Mason Mount, he sat him down and told him that this is what I want for you to deliver for my team. And if at all you cannot, then we hunt obviously going to be at par and he first tells the player what he wants and if the player doesn't really meet the standards then he comes out and really tells him or her that we are not going to be at par so those are the levels that Eric Ten Hag is going to hate to say it as the manager of Manchester United and to me I like it because these are things that we've been missing out for a very very long time and that is what we call standard standards have been really dropped at Manchester United and guess who is raising them back to where they're supposed to be it's Eric Ten Hag and if you cannot meet the high standards then Manchester United aren't your place this is reflective of how players are obviously snubbing other teams and obviously saying we are going to Manchester United that is it look at Mason Mount Liverpool wanted him 
Arsenal wanted him, Bayern Munich wanted him, he said, I'm going to Manchester United. Rasmus Hoyland, PSG is in the mix, he has told them, no way, I'm not, I'm not going that side, I'm coming to Manchester United. So that shows you that if that is happening in the first year of Eric Ten Hag, after the second season of Eric Ten Hag managing Manchester United, we are going to be untouchable. Very many players are really going to be trying to come into Manchester United. And trust me, the financial situation is going to get better. Do you know why it's going to get better? I believe with the couple of players you brought in, you're going to be performing better in the Champions League. <laughs> That's it. And we are going to be performing better in the Premier League. That is it. The tickets have been increased at Old Trafford. <laughs> you know that. And I believe that the new sponsorship deal, shared sponsorship deal that you're going to get is really going to be so much huge. And the one of Adidas that you're going to renew very soon in the coming years will obviously have to amount to a hundred million pounds plus because obviously we are the most, most followed or supported team in the world with close to one billion fans all over the world. That is it. We hold the most number of registered funds in the world, close to 400,000 funds registered. So it shows you that we are really a big team. And for your information, for the season booking, for the season ticket bookings, around March, people had booked for this next season of 2023-2024, close to 100, 440,000 people. What does that show you? People now, are dying to come back to Old Trafford. Remember, this club, sorry, the team of Man United really has um, how many seaters? It's um, it's having close to 70, 78,000 seaters. Now, if you're having times two the number of bookings, when you've not yet won ahead to win a major trophy, how is it gonna be if at all United wins a major trophy? Have you thought about that? It's really going to be so much, so much heartwarming and we can't wait to see United into that galaxy of form. And lastly, Telegraph Docker, that is James Docker, United correspondent for the Telegraph, has told us something important. And it's all about Manchester United have only two commercial days on the preseason tour with Ten Hag eager for the players to direct all the energy into the football now you see <laughs> ten Hag is gonna hate to be given a lot of veto power at Manchester United the board does not decide anything sporting for him especially for the players he has given them only two days to see to it that they do their commercial campaigns launch the jerseys obviously sell them off to see to it that they get some returns back to the team and obviously see the fans of united talk there see the fans of united meet their fans but this time around it's not like it was like in the entire preseason of close to like 40 days like six seven days were really allocated for united to do such Eric and hag knows that the preseason is so much important to see it that we get in what we call all mistakes rectified at the club of Manchester United and he does not welcome anything like he doesn't welcome anything like that at his club so that is Eric Ten Hag for you and there he comes to do the need for and obviously setting an agenda that has never been set before by manager of Manchester United and when you look at all his traits it all opens up widely why Alex Ferguson is in love with him because he loves his job and he is a modern manager. He has gone ahead to reset with the players. Obviously bring the dressing room back to order. No more leaks are really echoing out of the dressing room. And he has gone ahead to really reinforce the respect of United players. So guys, your thoughts on Amrabat wanting United to transfer badly are welcome in the comment section below and United is determination to see to it that they give him the best of the move that he deserves. What do you make about Eric Ten Hag coming out and obviously putting out all those standards? Are you okay with them? Do you think they're going to take us back to the glory days? And lastly, Leon Gretzka, would you go in for him 
all Sophia and Amra, but I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. May the living true God bless you abundantly. My Muslim viewers and subscribers, Barak Laufikum. Ciao, ciao.